My name is Stephanie Cole and this is my husband Jared. Uh, we own two GMC motorhomes, a 1973 Painted Desert and a 1975, which one was this? Eleganza. Eleganza, <laughs> which has been repainted and redone. Uh, we originally got into uh, the GMC motorhome lifestyle, I guess if you could call it, uh, looking for ways to travel in a time when, uh, if you remember, um, naked body scanners and things at the airport became a thing. It felt very intrusive and we didn't really particularly enjoy that thought. Um, I had had myself uh, hip surgeries which made it difficult for me to sit for long periods of time so we decided to uh, embark on the road trip, uh, exploring America and, and a lot of places that we've never been before. Um, and so we began searching for either a travel trailer or a drivable motorhome. And in my research and actually speaking with people who owned both, uh, the consensus was, is this a traveling, is, is it the journey or the destination that you're more interested in? And for us, it's really the journey. The destination will obviously be there at the end of a journey. And so we embarked on looking for an actual motorhome. And the, the search began really on Craigslist, honestly, interestingly enough. And there were such a variety of things that we, we looked at. But the GMCs kept popping up in posts and they were in the price range that we were looking for. We didn't have a lot of money to spend on a motorhome, but these were in that price range. And I was mostly doing the investigations for these things. And when I came across them, I thought they were, they were the most fantastic looking things I had ever seen. They were just so cool. And excitedly, I share this information with Jared, who looked at me like I had two heads, really. 40 years old. A 40 year old, yeah, 40 year old <laughs> motorhome, are you kidding me? But that got him curious, and he took my research and went even farther like he usually does. He's really good at this. And delved into this whole world, this beautiful world of these motorhomes and found them to be not just unique and gorgeous, but in a wide variety of conditions. So you had the people that had really worked hard to restore them or to remake them in their own way. But the most fascinating part, the really thing that, the, the thing that grabbed him was that there were so many of them still on the road and used. These are not a classic vehicle that sits. The people still camp in these. They drive them everywhere. And there is a huge community of them. And that's really what drew us to them. We found the 1973 Painted Desert on a Craigslist ad for sale by a gentleman probably an hour away from us in Shenandoah. And he welcomed us to come out and take a look at it. And I have to say getting up close to one versus seeing it in a, in a picture was just amazing. I was hooked on this thing immediately. And um, Jared, of course, being mechanically minded and very curious about things, got into this thing and really started looking at it. And he had, the owner, the previous owner, had done some cosmetic work to it, but said mechanically it was a ringer. It was just perfect condition. Uh, he took us for a drive in it, and it, I was so surprised at how smoothly it just seemed to glide over the road and any bumps you just sort of bounced along. It was very gently. It wasn't this jarring experience that you get in other motorhomes and and it moved. It, it was it wanted to go fast and it maneuvered around turns and so beautifully and tightly, you know, it kind of went. <laughs> and we get back to his house, he takes us for a track around around and he gets back to his home and hands us the keys and says, please go take it for a drive. And we did, and I have to say that uh, we both experienced it. He drove, I drove, and I feel like my parents, not my parents, but my grandparents had these old cars, these old Cadillacs or old Pontiacs, this 1970s vehicles, it drives just like one. It's so easy to drive. I love driving it. He mostly hogs the driving, um, but I love driving and taking my turn. And um, it ended up that it stalled on us. <laughs> 
returning to his house and we managed to get it started again, get it back to the house. And this man spent the rest of the afternoon with us troubleshooting. Why was it, why did it stall? They immediately pumped it up and got underneath. My husband, he, and this man, this stranger we just met, my husband and this guy are underneath and dropping the fuel tanks. And they took the fuel tanks down, they inspected all the connections, they looked inside, they didn't find anything. The next thing was the fuel line and they went along and they found this electric fuel pump in the line, in the middle between the engine and the fuel tanks. Took it out, reconnected the lines, and then we all go trekking down to this garage he has on his property. He brings out a battery and some cables and tries to spark the thing. So here we are, probably gonna set a fire or blow something up. <laughs> And what with this guy we just met, which I loved, and uh, discovered that that was the problem. It was clogged, it wasn't working. We get back in and it just takes off. This We had, had never had a problem with it as far as that goes since. But this gentleman's, this guy's experience with us is indicative of the entire community of people. That willingness to go, not just the extra mile, but the extra 10 or 20 or 30 miles, whatever it takes to help you. Um, and we've found that over and over again in the community and just interacting with people and how enthusiastic they are about them and how kind and generous everybody is. It's, it's really a, a community that you can um, feel safe in and be a part of because you know someone knows something that they can help you somehow with their knowledge or they have extra parts that they can lend you or just give you a lot of times to keep you going. Um, and that larger community is actually documented and so you can, wherever you are, if there's someone nearby, and generally there will be, uh, they are willing to contribute to help you in some way. If it's a matter of bringing you lunch on the side of the road, <laughs> unfortunately breakdowns do happen, but they happen with all, even the new ones. Um, or housing you for a day or two or however long it takes for you to get on the road again, uh, bringing you parts or taking you somewhere. They're just, a, it's just a fantastic family atmosphere. Once you have one of these, you are part of a larger family. They're on Facebook. There are groups on Facebook. There are groups, there are um, discussion boards out there that um, if you're looking to know something, knowledge base is within finger tap reach of your little keyboard and you can speak to someone on the phone. They are just, it's been an amazing experience to own one. And they're so unique. You have people coming up to you and asking you about them. You have the folks that think that they're brand new. Who is, what is this new, is, what was that, when was that made in the 90s? And we say, actually 1973. And they're shocked. Um, we are typically the oldest camper in a campground anywhere you go. We, we out, Oh, we outaged oh, a who... Winnebago yeah. by two years in one campground. And he was always bragging and about it. He's always you know, bragging I'm about always, it. I'm the oldest one. You know, we come rolling in. Like... No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the utility of it, the design, way ahead of its time. It's way ahead of its time. And it's in, in the entire make of this um, motorhome from the low uh, living deck area, it's only one step in as you can see, um, to the front wheel drive, to the only downside, one axle, but you still pay for three. <laughs> no toll booth operator will believe you. I can't imagine myself in anything else, really, um, at this point, unless we were like really gonna live in it. I don't know if we'd really live in it, but for for camping, we've taken, our, we've taken the 73, it's Yellowstone, and you know, we've had some problems. We lost a transmission in Iowa or Indiana, Chicago. Indiana, wherever Illinois. it was, Illinois. That's right, Illinois. <laughs> um, but we lost the transmission. But the remarkable thing is that some someone had a new transmission in Iowa, and they're only a few hours away from us. Offered to let us have it. They hadn't installed it in the motorhome that they were intending to put it in, and it was going to be months before they were going to do that anyway. They knew we were on our way to Yellowstone, stuck halfway but in the middle of our trip there. And we took our Toad, which was a hybrid Honda Civic sedan, and drove out to Iowa, put the new transmission in the trunk. You can imagine what that looked like. And 
drove it back to the transmission shop where it was installed. Our core was taken out. We put that back in the trunk and drove it back out to Iowa to that gentleman who used the shipping crate that the new one came in, repackaged it and sent it out to the person who rebuilt the cores. And then we just paid for, we sent the money on for the new core. And it, <laughs> where else are you gonna get that kind of friendship and generosity and kindness in any other community, I dare you to find it anywhere else. Um, so I, I could not, I can't separate myself from these people and these coaches. It's just, it's been amazing and wonderful.